Welcome along everybody to the under 19 C Girls All-Ireland Schools League Final between St. Louis Carrie McCross and St. Joseph's Secretary School from Castle Bar. I'm Connor Meany and I'm joined in commentary here by Matt. Matt, you're very welcome. Thanks Connor, good to be here. Big crowd as well, so uh, if nothing else it'll be loud for the game. So we have St. Joseph's Secondary School in red and St. Louis Carrie McCross in, I don't know what colour that is, Matt, navy-ish? Greeny navy. Greeny navy. Green navy. Green navy. Green navy. And we're off the mark straight away with a three-pointer for St. Joseph's. So a great start for here for St. Joseph's. Matt, we've had some great finals here during the week, so a couple more to go with this and one more game today. What will you be looking for, for in the early going here? Uh, with the C games, you, ne you never really know. Um, in, in the league, it tends to be a little bit more of an even contest. Sometimes you can get some slightly off finals in the C standard of the cup because of the draw. But here, you'll be looking at two teams that will have beaten the best teams in the country to get here. So hopefully that would mean fairly even final. Um, you know, normally in these games, they're fairly quickly up and down affairs. But uh, it, it really comes down to who settles the quickest. I'm, I'm Carrick McCross have been in the cup final as a school so they'll be used to it um, but I'm not sure we've seen St. Louis in a good number of years here in the, one of the finals so a frenetic opening as we'd expect but both teams would have very good coaches on the sidelines Eugene O'Hanlon of course the father of DCU Saints uh, Kevin O'Hanlon and Monaghan football's Kevin o or Stephen O'Hanlon and then on the other sideline St. Joseph's Secondary School of Castle Bar is coached by one of the kind of well-known names of Irish women's basketball and Siobhan Kilkenny who of course played for the Manhattan Jaspers in NCAA Division 1 she's in the school's Hall of Fame as we see a great basket there for Carrick Cross. so with, with good coaches Matt we should see good organisation and as you can see here Carrick Cross are in a zone press so we'll see good shape to both teams sometimes even though it is a bit frenetic, you will still see the tactics that they're they're going going for. Yeah, well, we've seen that. I think I've seen that in the first two minutes here. That you mentioned the press there, St. Louis in a, in a in a press, but also the composure and the ball movement on offense from St. Joseph's down the other end against the zone. Often this standard, a lot of teams will play zone because it's difficult for them to score from long range. But uh, both teams have moved the ball really well early against the zone and got good shots from it. So. That's a good sign and a, and a, and a, a sign of good coaches at both, on, on both sidelines, as you mentioned. Carrick McCross score again there to get into the lead. Nice work by Sarah Martin. She missed the initial jump shot, but then got in for the offensive rebound. Sirisha McCabe drives inside, doesn't get it, gets the rebound herself again. Again, good defense though, and Carrick McCross are out to the races long range three here and in so many uh, we see Matt in so many of these games obviously there's a big crowd it's a little bit different than the games that the the girls have played in throughout the year so there's often a little bit of kind of nervous excitement in that first kind of quarter where there might be a few more turnovers and long range shots than you'll, you'll see throughout the rest of the game yeah a little bit up and down early on, but uh, once they get this first quarter out of the way, they'll, they're normally quite settled. I suppose for both coaches, the plan will be to try and still be in the game after the first quarter when the girls do settle down and realise that it's just a normal basketball court and start to enjoy themselves a little bit and appreciate the fact that it's, it's a fantastic experience and a, and a great opportunity to play in front of so many people. Great rebound inside there by Amelie Nymzeka. Good defence there by Carrick McCross. A good hand in there by Captain Anya Lachman. Knocked the ball away. And Carrick McCross are now seeing what they can find against this zone defence. Mid-range shot, no good. Rebound by Neve Flannery, one of the co-captains for St. Joseph's. Yeah, and both teams sitting back in the zone, limiting 
the opposition to long range shots so it's really going to take one of the teams just to start knocking down a couple of shots just to settle the nerves a little bit here but at the moment things just a little bit off but uh, I'm sure as the game goes on they'll settle into things and fast breaks is really where teams need to get, need to get their points in this this style of basketball I suppose yeah, another great rebound by Amelie Nymzeka I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that name but she's already been a force early on some great rebounds inside it's a good size as Alice Hussey takes it inside but it's denied mid-range shot no good and a good rebound there by Ella Carlin Anya Luckman with the nice pass inside and just can't finish and again Amelie with a fantastic rebound so We have a timeout on the floor for St. Joseph's, so we'll be back in just a moment. So welcome back. Kirk across in that press and a lovely steal. And a foul drawn there by Anya Lachman. So great work by Anya. She got her hand in. Good steal. We have a sub coming in. No, we don't. We have a sub at the table. We'll be in at the next ball. Off balance shot there and Amalia with another great rebound. Mada looks like she's going to be a big factor inside. She's controlling a lot of the rebounds. Yeah, you can see by the height and just the presence as well. She looks like a really good athlete. And she's been dominating offensively here. She gets the ball inside and goes up to me. My next question, can she put the ball in the basket? And if she can, has to be a huge weapon for St. Joseph's and something they'll be looking to get the ball to as much as possible. Yeah, they haven't looked inside to her much yet, but she showed there that she's well capable so a number of rebounds and then a, a good shot but that's fantastic by Anya Lockman there with a long range three from the corner and yeah. again Carrick McCross with the steal Anya was good in their previous appearance here so they'll be looking for quite a lot from her Coach Siobhan Kilkenny is telling Amelia, not to leave the ground, just keep your hands up. She's got the size already, she doesn't need to take any risks. We saw in the under 19A final, or, or under 16A final, girls final earlier on, that it was foul trouble for Klaas de Kieran, proved very important, and we already have two fouls on Neve Flannery, one of the co-captains here for St. Joseph's. So that'll be something to keep an eye on. Good rebound there by Chloe Hennigan. And she gets it to Saoirse McCabe. And unfortunately, the pass just evades Emma Walsh. Yeah, and St. Louis doing a good job of getting into the, their zone press quickly, which is stopping the fast break of St. Joseph's. St. Joseph's have people down the court, but just that little bit of early pressure is slowing the ball down and the the early outlet and just giving them a chance to get back on defence which has proven difficult for St. Joseph so far yeah nice drive in there by Anya but she was a mess by Amelia inside who made the shot difficult by putting her hands up and we have a, another time out here for St. Louis Carrick Macross we'll be back in just a moment
So welcome back as both sets of fans are really getting behind the teams. We have 154 to go in this the first quarter of the under 19 C All Ireland Schools League. That zone press again causing trouble. So Matt, early on it looks like that Carrick Cross are going to try and hurry up St. Joseph's and cause some turnovers and maybe get some easy fast break layups. And on the other end, if St. Joseph's can look after the ball, they have that little bit of extra size inside that they might be able to take advantage of. Yeah, it's making for quite an interesting game to be honest because they're two completely opposite ways as you see a great two-point shot there. Yeah, great shot there by Chloe Hennigan. She knocks down the three to give St. Joseph's back the lead as they lead 8-7 with 1.20 to go in this first quarter. Yeah, one team trying to, trying to get turnovers and, and quick scores. The other team trying to play more of a half-court game. So they even see who comes out on top in the end. But at the moment, it's uh, kind of an even keel at the moment. Nice step through and lovely layup inside there by Sarah Corr. She got around the inside presence and finished well. As Chloe Hennigan tries to break the press, and she does with a good pass up to Alice Hussey, who gets it back to Hennigan. Back to Hussey. Hussey from the corner. And Anya Lockman ahead on the fast break, just a little bit too fast. These backboards don't give you as much as your regular school gym would. And there's Amelia with a good rebound, but unfortunately a turnover for St. Joseph's. And a nice pass and a foul. So good work there. Again, St. Louis managing to force a turnover and it will see Anya Lockman head to the free throw line for two. There is just under 19 seconds to go in this the first quarter yeah it's just a little bit heavy on the fast break there but uh, those are the type of scores they'll be looking to try and create as they look to press and get out and fast and run but she'll have another chance here from the free throw line just gonna stop and tire shoelace as we have absolute silence here in the arena except for me of course <laughs> And there's another steal for Carrick Cross, this time by Lauren Garland. Five seconds to go on the clock. Are they going to get one last shot on the buzzer? It's no good. And at the end of the first quarter, St. Louis of Carrick Cross lead St. Joseph Secondary School from Castlebar, nine points to eight. We'll be back in just a moment. So welcome back to this second quarter of the under 19 C All Ireland Schools League final. St. Louis Carrick Cross lead St. Joseph's Secondary School of Castle Bar, nine points to eight in what's been a, a tight but entertaining first quarter. Long range shot, no good for Carrick Cross, and unfortunately. Emma Walsh just stood on the sideline there on the far side. 
it's a, an, a different experience, Matt, playing in this sort of court where obviously most school gyms, you just have the wall right there, right beside it. And instead here you've got the crowd and you have the advertising hoardings. It can sometimes take a little while to get your bearings. Yeah, it's closed off. It'll be something they wouldn't be used to. You know, such a big gym, but then with the advertising hoardings again makes makes it feel like the sideline is a little bit further away than it actually is. But uh, I have to say, both teams, whilst the scoring has not been exceptional shooting-wise, the way they've moved the ball and created opportunities has been really good from both sides and, you know, just shows how well coached they are. And again, another great fast break and good pass inside, resulting in two shots. But both teams have been very impressive and the way they've set up and the way they've moved the ball. They just need to try and put the ball in the basket at the end of it, shoot a little bit better, but I'm sure that will come as the, as the confidence grows and the, and the game gets, gets a little bit towards the business end of the, of the match here. So Lauren Garland on the free throw line. It was a lovely bounce pass by Anya Lachman that set her up. She has one more free throw to come. And that just ran us out, but a, yet again, a great rebound by Amalia, who was surrounded completely when they tried to get the ball into her the last time down on offense here. And it, there's a lot of attention being paid to the tall number 14. Good rebound there by Emma Walsh. Gets it to Saoirse McCabe, who finds Neve Flannery. Just a bit too much on that shot by Flannery. Again, they look into the post, good post position, but good defense by Carrick McCross. And they're out on the break again. Nothing happening though. Ball goes back out to Lockman. Extra pass back across again to Lockman, just short on that one. Good rebound, and Saoirse McCabe is pushing the ball down the sideline, but unfortunately, he just steps out. We'll see Chloe Hennigan coming in for Emma Walsh here. Some good defense there by Emma. She earns a break. Again, defense is key here. I mean, neither coach is going to switch up from what they're doing defensively. Just going to sit in back and allow a long shots to go because uh, at the moment, no one's able to hit them. And until someone does, they're not going to want to allow anything inside. And we've seen that with uh, Amelie not being allowed to get any space. She grabs another rebound there. But it's very much a fact that St. Louis won't allow her to get the ball close to the basket. Yeah, and as we reach the five and a half minute mark to go in this first half, we see... Caitlin Wilcox checking into the game here for the first time. And she comes in for Lauren Garland. And that's a fantastic shot. Great stuff there by Alice Hussey as she knocks down the shot to give the lead back to St. Joseph's of Castlebar, 10 to 9. Yeah, and they really needed that, as you said, just St. Louis just sagging off completely there and giving up those shots. So they can make one or two more of those it might make St. Louis change the way they're playing a little bit and get out and guard a little bit more which might leave a little bit more space inside for Amelie and a great response there it's been the duo of Lauren Garland and Anya Lockman really doing a great job two of the smaller players on the court but they're causing a lot of problems the ball goes into Amelie and she's surrounded and she draws a foul and Matt, it actually might be for, it sounds strange to say, but for St. Joseph's, sometimes a missed shot might be easier than the pass inside because I mean, is uh, drawing so much attention that she may be, it might be easier for her to go get offensive rebounds than finding some passes. Yeah, good point. I mean, she, we, she's shown already that she can grab any rebound there. As they see from out of bounds, play her height again. So, yeah, I suppose it's not something that any coach would want to draw up, but shooting from the outside is what they're being given so you know you're always told take what you're given so it might be a good idea and just let her crash the offensive rebounds and maybe get a little bit of position rather than looking for the ball in the post ball goes out to Caitlin Wilcox who gets it into the corner 
but a travel is called, so it'll be St. Joseph's ball here again. It looks like there's not going to be much between the teams throughout the game. As the giant bear waves the flags there in the stands. So St. Joseph's pushed the ball down the floor. No good. Good offensive rebound though. Pass into Amalia and she draws the foul so she's earned herself two free throws. Yeah, good job of getting second shots that time from St. Joseph's and pays off for them as they'll get two shots here. First one doesn't fall, but she has one more opportunity from the line here. And that one just rattles out, but the referees have decided that she'll get one more free throw. So if the rebounders come into the lane before she's released the ball, the shooter gets another opportunity if they miss. That one doesn't fall. And a good rebound there by Sarah Carr. Sarah gets the ball back, finds Anya Lachman, reverses it to Ella Carlin, and a travel is called. And we will have a timeout here with 3.50 to go in this, the first half. Welcome back. So Carrick McCross again in the press, trying to force turnovers. And they almost did. Ball back up to Neve Flannery, who shoots from long range. Almost an offensive rebound for Maeve O'Shea. Sarah Martin moves it to Wilcox. Out to core, into the corner for Lachman. Just doesn't go, but a great offensive rebound by Sarah Core. Doesn't go, and Amalia with another great rebound, and she's really imposed her will on the board so far in this game. Has really controlled them well, but turnovers are the big issue for Siobhan Kilkenny's side so far. Matt, they, they are turning the ball over. The one good thing, if there, if you could say that, is that a lot of them are dead ball turnovers, so not really giving fast break layup opportunities. It's more that they've gone out of bounds uh, each time. Yeah, neither team giving up anything easy. If you see, see one fast break that was missed for St. Louis, and I don't think uh, St. Joseph have got it at all on the fast break. Uh, probably better off just securing their ball a little bit because throwing it forwards quickly hasn't really worked, and they've not really got anything from it. So better off just trying to keep hold of the ball and get it down there for offense because when they have had the ball they've moved the ball very well and got open shots and they've hit one three and the last one wasn't far away either so they obviously do have a bit of shooting out, shooting out there as Amelie will take a little bit of a break here it'll be interesting to see what happens now on the defensive rebounding end of the floor with her out of the, out of the game yeah, Saoirse McCabe has checked back into the game so 
St. Joseph's keep control of the ball with 2.28 to go in this first half. They control the ball through Neve Flannery. Flannery with the long range shot, no good, but rebound is controlled by Chloe Hennigan. But excellent work there by Caelan Wilcox, gets the steal. So St. Louis probing against the defense. We'll see if they're able to take advantage of the smaller defense, but no good there. And Saoirse McCabe with the good rebound and looks ahead. She finds her teammates, but just slightly rushed there by Maeve O'Shea. Yeah, a little, little bit of composure needed. Maeve O'Shea had a bit of space in front of her. Could have driven to the basket rather than pulling up from there. Lachlan no good, but it's a fast break here for Alice Hussey. But great work there by Carrick McCross and Sarah Martin to get back. As we see Maeve O'Shea head to the bench to earn a break as Amalia checks back into the game. And Chloe Hennigan takes a shot. But there's the size straight back in off the bench and St. Joseph's have regained the lead through good work there by Emilia Nimjeka. But a fantastic response straight away by Sarah Martin. And Carrick McCross have regained the lead. A jump ball is called, but St. Joseph's will regain possession. One minute and six seconds to go in this, the first half, as we see another sub coming in for St. Joseph's. And uh, Cunningham checking into the game for Chloe Hennigan. Looks like Chloe took a little shot there to the mouth. Great dribbling there by Neve Flannery. Doesn't go, but she gets the offensive rebound and it leads to a jump ball. Some nice dribbling to break the defense. Just couldn't finish inside. So Anya Lachman with possession again here for St. Louis as they push the ball down. Caitlin Wilcox back to Lachman inside. Going straight at the bigger defender. Just doesn't work for Anya Corbley. Nice take there to the basket. Just doesn't fall. That was a, a great move to the basket there by Saoirse McCabe. Just didn't fall for her, but again, the offensive rebound was there for Amalia, and she gets fouled. So we'll head back to the free throw line for the second time this game. She wasn't able to connect on either the first two, but she has two more opportunities here. Yeah, and as, as you mentioned earlier, it's a good chance for them to, or, or miss shots, to get it in their best position. And she scored the last one time, uh, time down with a putback. Got the rebound there, but was fouled, so... It's certainly something that's keeping St. Joseph's in the game here. Second free throw off the back of the ring as well, but offensive rebound for the Mayo ladies. And Amalia gets inside, can't finish. St. Louis did a good job of crowding her out, but a steal here. Neve Flannery makes the extra pass. Bit of contact but no call. So we have 6.6 .6 seconds remaining here in the first half. St. Joseph's trailing by one, but they have an opportunity to try and get the ball inside here. Can they find either their players? No, they can't. They miss, but, and the putback is missed. And that will end the first half here in the National Basketball Arena, the under 19 C Girls Schools League Final. And St. Louis Carrick Macross take a one point lead into the break. 13 to 12 over St. Joseph's from Castlebar.
So welcome back to the second half of the under 19C schools final. St. Louis Carrick Macross leading St. Joseph's in Castlebar. 13 to 12. It's been a nip and tuck game so far, Matt. Not much between the t two teams. No, and uh, the two missed there. It'd be interesting to see what both coaches, we talk about the quality of both coaches and what they'll have looked to do during half time. Obviously, they won't be looking to change anything defensively um, because points have been very difficult to come by. But at, at some point, one of them's got to win the game. So it'll be interesting to see if they try and do anything different offensively, if one of them maybe starts to take a few more outside shots. I mean, because when you look at the amount of turnovers there's been, that if they could have just got those down, and, uh, and even if they had launched away from three-point range on a few more of those, a couple of threes going in off the backboard anyway, a, ni a nice bounce or anything, could really be the difference in winning or losing this game. Yep, so we just have an injury on the floor, hopefully nothing too serious. Just to recap that first half, the top scorers for St. Joseph's were Alice Hussey on five points, um, Amalia Nimjeka on four, and Chloe Hennigan had three points for St. Louis Carrier Cross. Captain Anya Lockman had five, Sarah Martin with four points, and both Sarah Core and Lauren Gartland with two each. So a good balance there. Unfortunately, it looks like it's a bit of a knock. We have physio dealing here. Mora helping. Looks like number five, Ella Corlin, but we'll just check. She looks like she's a little bit upset. So hopefully nothing too serious. It is Ella. So best wishes to Ella. Hopefully nothing too serious. We'll try and keep an eye on it here. She's down behind the bench. It looks like she's grabbing her knee, so hopefully it was just a bang to the knee. Long range shot and good work there by Carrick Cross and Anya Corbley is doing a great job, Matt, boxing out whenever she can, so she's not as big as Amelia, but she's doing a good job of bodying her up and not giving her easy second chance opportunities. Yeah, she did a great job that time down and um Fair play to Amelia as well. She could have been tempted just to push in the back, but not kept her distance. But it led to a good fast break for uh, St. Louis and uh, gave it a good opportunity for Gartland to get to the line. But I also thought that um, St. Joseph's did a much better job, whatever they worked on at half time in terms of breaking the press there. You could see they were much more structured as a free throw is nailed here. Yeah, good work there by Lauren as the lead is extended to two. And it was almost a steal and turnover, but just uh, at the sideline again. So it will remain St. Joseph's ball. And they have the ball through Neve Flannery, who finds Saoirse McCabe. Nice form on the shot there by Chloe Hennigan. Just doesn't fall, though. And that's a fantastic shot by Neve Flannery. So doing the co-captain's role there and tying the game up. So a great shot there by her. Good move inside. No good, but a good offensive rebound. Usually in these games, Matt, it's kind of low scoring early and then it builds up but actually in this game the first quarter was 9-8 and then it was just four apiece in the second uh, quarter so the defences were really on top but we're starting to get a little bit more here as Anya Lachlan takes her total to seven. Yeah and I think actually the, the quality of the coaches is actually making it not as good a game for the neutral I suppose in these C games what you would normally see is very entertaining because it's up and down a million miles an hour a lot of missed shots but decent scoring because they're just going up and down all the time. There's plenty of space. Whereas because the quality of the coach and, and, and uh, both teams have been worked so hard, they always get back in transition on defense. They always set up their defense and there's no easy baskets out there. 
which means it's the long-range shots that are going to make the difference. So it's, it's led to a, a, an interesting but low-scoring game. There's a concern here for coach Eugene O'Hanlon as one of his, his captain, Anya Lockman, uh, who's top scorer in the game so far with seven points, has just picked up her third foul. So it'll be something we'll keep an eye on. Amalia battles for the rebound inside, but a great work there. A great rebound by the smaller players. Before she, it's a travel. Ella Corlin. And we will have a timeout here on the floor with 5.30 to go in this third quarter. So welcome back after that timeout as our in arena MC has tried to drag the life out of the place by playing the bare necessities. I thought it was a good choice. Matt's iPod has been taken out of rotation. Although there is slightly better versions of it though I might say. He could have picked a, a better, more upbeat version of bare necessity. Long range two, no good. Battle for the rebounds. Three no good. And St. Louis out to the races. A foul call though. On number 10, Neve Flannery. Looked like she did a good job getting back. But that will be Flannery's third foul too. So Flannery of course has already picked up a basket in the second half. So she'll have to be careful not to pick up a fourth. Good patience. Rockman no good. And a jump ball called inside. So it's going to remain a St. Louis ball. As they still lead by two. Corner shot. No good. Great rebound. Head up. Good pass. No good. And it's starting to open up here, Matt, a little bit. Lockman with the lovely pass. And that's a lovely basket leading to a timeout here on the floor as St. Joseph's now trail St. Louis by four points.
and a steal straight away from the timeout. And Lachlan takes it inside, just doesn't go in. Gets her own rebound. She looks inside again. Back to Lachlan in the corner. No good. And a good rebound. Oh. People willing to put their bodies on the line here. It ends up in a jump ball. Yeah, and timeout call there by Coach Kilkenny. In a close game like this, four points can be a difference, and especially once the girls look up at the scoreboard and see themselves behind, they start to do different things. So she'll just want to settle the nerves, get them a score, and keep it within a manageable distance. The crowd getting into it here more and more. And a travel called. I don't think the players have heard the whistle. The crowd were getting into it a little bit, so they couldn't hear it. But the travel's called. So it remains a four-point game. It's been five to two so far in this, the third quarter. St. Louis trying to beat the press but again turn it over Lachman gets it back again bodies hit the floor and a foul drawn there by Alice Hussey so good work so yeah. just like to see St. Joe's just slow it down a little bit more on the press when they've when they've slowed it down and uh, used their press break they've had no trouble getting it over but when they've tried to push it a little bit more they've ended up turning the ball over and they just need to make sure every opportunity counts as they do on that occasion yeah Alice Hussey stepping up hitting a big shot and we're back to a two point game the crowd enjoyed that one great shot by Hussey who gets called for reaching in there It'll be only our first foul of the game and the third team foul. Crowd getting into it here. Long range shot coming back for Eric Cross. No good. And Chloe Hennigan controls the rebound. Great job by Hennigan in the right spot. As Hennigan earns a break and Emma Walsh checks back into the game, so they're going to look to try and just... They don't need to go a million miles an hour here against this press. They can get it over, and they do this time, safely. Look to the baseline through Hussey. Back out to Neve Flannery. Oof. No good, but Amalia is inside, causing problems, but again, swarmed and... It's a nice fast break. Amalia with the rebound. Unfortunately, it leads to a turnover. Into the corner. A three pointer from the top. No good for Anya. And a travel called. So St. Joseph's regained possession with some excellent defense. They've really done a good job defensively after that timeout by Coach Kilkenny. The ball straight up the court to Emily. And unfortunately, she shuffled her feet. Yeah, defense has been excellent from St. Joseph's since that time out. They've got a couple of stops, but they're unfortunately they've been unable to turn those stops into good shooting opportunities, and they've turned the ball over a couple of times here, which has limited limited their shot selections. And uh, as we have a three-second violation here, a three-second you you don't see it very often, but so there we have it. A risky pass there, pays off. 
Great dribbling inside. Just doesn't fall. Very unlucky there by Alice. Anya looking inside. Finds Anya Corbley. Shot just doesn't fall for Corbley. But St. Louis will regain possession from the baseline. Step into the shot, just doesn't fall, but a good offensive rebound. And it looks like an easy opportunity inside. Excellent work there by Anya Lachman, just in the right place at the right time, picks up the loose ball. Yeah, the ball just fell kindly to her there and she made no mistakes from close range. And in fairness to both teams, when they have got open layups and stuff close to the basket, they've <coughs> hit just about all of them. The problem is, defense has been so good from both teams that they've not got many opportunities. But we're back to a four-point lead here and St. Joseph's need a basket before the end of this quarter. A foul is called on St. Louis there. So it will be two free throws as that will be the fifth team foul. So anytime you get above 14 fouls in a quarter, any foul after that is two free throws. So heading to the line is one of the co-captains for St. Joseph's, Saoirse McCabe. As they trail by four points with just under a minute to go. The crowd liked that one. Nice form there from Saoirse. As she has the second one doesn't fall, but it's an offensive rebound. Another offensive rebound. More bodies on the floor. And a foul is drawn there by Lauren Garland, who's going to head to the free throw line herself for two free throws. So a three-point game at the moment. We have subs both sides. That's the fourth foul on number 10, Neve Flannery, who's just earned herself a break. And Neve has been one of the important players in breaking that press, so it's a potentially dangerous one for St. Joseph's. Yeah, she's been... Uh in the backcourt here, trying to break the press. He's also been one of their most willing shooters and one of the people who can get open on the, on the wing. So offensively, that might put them in a little bit of trouble here. And a foul is called there. So we have two more free throws. The clock is still running here in the gym. But we have 32 seconds to go. It's stopped now. And there's the fourth foul on Sarah Kaur. So we're starting to see a bit of foul trouble on both sides now with three different players on four fouls. It's 20 to 17, so St. Joseph's with two free throws here for Emma Walsh. She'll see if she can narrow the deficit. Again, a silence here in the arena. That was perfect. So the score is now 20 to 18. Walsh with a chance to reduce the deficit again. And she hits both. Fantastic shooting there by Emma Walsh. So with 30 seconds to go in this third quarter, St. Louis leads St. Joseph's 20 to 19. We're into the last offense potentially of this quarter. Shot missed, but an offensive rebound. Amalia looks like she controlled the ball. <coughs> Looked like the ball would have rolled off one of the Carrickman Cross heads, but they've regained possession. 14.9 seconds to go in this third quarter. They find a good pass inside, but it looks like it's going to be turned over. And it has. A referee had called a foul there, so we've got two more free throws. I didn't see that one myself, but that will be the third foul on Anya Corbley, and Anya's done a great job bodying up on 
Amelie Nimjeka. So, Chloe Hennigan, who scored three points in the first half, has two free throws to come. Nice form on her shot, but it just doesn't fall. But she has an opportunity here to tie it going into the fourth quarter. See if she can hit it. It looks short. It is. So it will be St. Louis ball. Seven seconds to go here. We'll see if they can have one big offense to finish this quarter. They've scored seven points so far in the quarter. It doesn't look like they'll get a shot off in time. And that's the end of the third quarter in the under 19 C girls schools final. St. Louis lead St. Joseph's 20 to 19. Long range two, just rims out there. The pass doesn't pay off, and we have a jump ball. Alice Hussey inbounds the ball. Neve Flannery, good dribbling inside. Doesn't work out. And it will be St. Louis' ball. Amalia is up at the scores table, so she'll be checking back into the game. She hasn't had as big an impact as we thought maybe in the first quarter, Matt. Uh, Carrick McCross have done a good job of kind of limiting her offensive rebounding opportunities. Yeah, even when she's got a couple, they've been all over her as soon as she's caught the ball and not given her any space. We saw once or twice she has found a bit of space to be able to get putbacks. But it's only really happened twice, maybe three times max in the whole game. And the rest of the time, St. Louis done a great job of just surrounding her as soon as she does get a rebound. And it's made it difficult inside. That was a nice opportunity, just doesn't fall. So, St. Anthony's. Or St. Joseph's sent Maeve O'Shea back to the bench. Nice offense there. And a shot clock, or a three second call, our second three second call of the game. That's one on both ends now, so. Yeah, and talked very early on about good ball movement from both teams, but with a game, one point game with just seven minutes to go, I mean, for me, I think I'd like to see them just get a few shots up. Maybe it will come down to a little bit of luck, a nice bounce or something that will get this goal, get this game, but. Too many turnovers, we see another another offence that with results in no one shooting the ball at all. So at every opportunity at the moment, I think I'd like to see both teams just get the ball up, take a few long range shots 
and see what they can come up with. Lauren Garland called for a foul here and an interesting thing to keep an eye on will be whether team fouls happen again like they did in that third quarter, Matt, because that ultimately led to a number of free throws as well. The ball's So it's St. Joseph's ball there. Nice move inside. Doesn't lead to a basket and a great rebound by Amalia. Long range pass. And good work again by Carrick Cross to get back in and not give up a fast break. Yeah, and in fairness, we've lost count the amount of times that Garland in particular and Lockman with it have managed just to get a hand or steal that, that long pass when it looked like St. Joseph's were going off in the fast break, but there's always been a single opportunity when St. Joseph's has been clean on the basket every single time. St. Louis, one of the players, has just managed to get a hand on the ball and get back in time and transition just to stop that easy bucket. Yeah, the two guards have been absolutely tenacious, getting a lot of offensive rebounds as well. They've kind of been everywhere, so no foul call there. Caleb Wilcox with the shot, doesn't go. Amalia with the rebound. She brings the ball down though. And St. Joseph's have the ball now. 5.33 to go in this, the fourth quarter of the under 19 C All-Ireland Girls Final. That's a fantastic score there by Alice Hussey. Great work by Neve Flannery set her up there. And St. Joseph's are back in the lead. Is there a response straight away from Carrick Cross? They draw a foul and they're going to head to the free throw line to shoot two. So, Matt, that was a lovely pass and a lovely finish inside there by St. Joseph's as they take the lead. So, a great finish by Hussey from a nice pass from Neve Flannery. Yeah, great finish on the break, nice touch of the backboard. One thing we have seen as a pattern throughout the game is every time St. Joseph's have scored or got themselves in the lead, almost the next place, St. Louis have come back and scored again. So just need to get a score, get a lead, and maybe build on that a little bit, get a few stops afterwards, just to see how St. Louis handle the pressure of being behind. Wilcox knocks down the second. And it's a tie game again. Both sets of fans are getting into us on their feet here in the National Basketball Arena. Pass goes into Amalia, makes the extra pass. It's gonna be a long range two, no good off the backboard, but an offensive rebound, and one more offensive rebound, and it just doesn't fall. A great opportunity there by We've just another sub there for St. Joseph's. And it's a timeout here on the floor, so we'll be back in just a moment.
Both sets of fans up on their feet, making as much noise as they possibly can. St. Joseph's with the ball here. Free throw line, jump shot, doesn't go. Amalia with the rebound. Ultimate leads to a turnover. Lockman at the ball with the ball at the top of the three-point line. Looking for an option. Again, she's looking. Finds her teammate inside. A good stop though. Nothing easy here. Lockman again drives in on the bigger player. Amelia gets called for a foul though. And and we're going to have a timeout on the floor here. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back. Apologies about the slight technical difficulties there. So 3.26 to go in this fourth quarter. There was no score there. Long range two, no good. Amalia a wrestle for the ball, but it's a jump ball. So St. Joseph's have the ball. Their crowd like that. So... They run a line. They just force the pass and it's gonna be a fast break opportunity for Karen oh. McCross. Oh. A fantastic block. And a steal. And a layup. Absolutely fantastic work. As the play is stopped there, so First of all, it was a fantastic block by Neve Flannery, but then a steal for Lauren Garland, and a breakaway layup to put St. Louis up by two, 
23-21 with 2.56 to go in this the fourth quarter of the under 19 C All Ireland Schools League final. Yeah, great steal and great finish. And just really need to have a couple of solid defensive sets now, St. Louis, because you could well see how they could just win this game out here without scoring again. Lachlan with the nice pass. And we have a timeout here as St. Louis have taken a four point lead, 25 21, with 2.34 to go in the fourth quarter. Welcome back here to the National Basketball Arena. So 2.27 to go in this fourth quarter. Nice pass inside. Layup doesn't fall. Amalia straight back up, doesn't fall. She gets another offensive rebound, but she's blocked out. St. Louis on the fast break. No. no good for St. Louis. One more opportunity for them though. And that's a huge shot. An absolutely huge shot there for Sarah Martin as she opens up a six point lead here. Could six points be enough? With 1.50 to go. St. Joseph's still struggling to score, so. Shot doesn't fall there. And a breakaway here. Alice Hussey takes it down the length of the court. Gets the ball back. Step in. No good. Amalia keeps the ball alive. Back into Hussey. And she knocks down a two. So 27 23 with 1.24 to go in this fourth quarter. Apologies. The scoreboard is now correct. So it is 27 23. 123 to go. A big stop needed for St. Joseph's Secondary School from Castle Bar here. They're having to extend their defense out. Coach Kilkenny tell them to get a bit of pressure on it. Time is against them here, so they need to get a stop. Try and get a quick score. Good work there. Potentially a travel, not called. No good. Good rebound by Amalia. And a foul is called. So it will be St. Joseph's ball, 57 seconds to go here in the National Basketball Arena. 27-23. We just had a big score from Alice Hussey. Oh. They can get a score here now, just give them a chance. Pass just goes astray, and it's gonna be a jump ball, and that's a big one as St. Louis have taken control of the ball with the directional arrow. They inbound the ball. Lachlan with the ball, nice pass, finds Garland.
So welcome back. 27.3 seconds to go in the game. Still 27-23 as Alice Hussey is on the free throw line. An opportunity to make it. A three-point game, so now a one-possession game. She has an opportunity to reduce that even further to just a two-point game. And she does. Excellent free throw shooting there by Hussey. Huge free throws there because both teams have shown an ability to turn the ball over. And a foul, which probably isn't the worst thing either in penalty. You wouldn't mind, I'm sure, Coach Kilkenny wouldn't mind sending to the free throw line if they foul once more. Yeah, so they're certainly be trying to get a turnover. That's the third team foul. So one more foul will lead to free throws. Or right, two more fouls. It's just gone up to the fourth. That was the fourth. So, we are in so the next foul will lead to free throws. They're going to have to foul now. Just taking a little bit too long to foul. And eventually they do foul. So it's going to be two free throws here. 9.2 seconds to go. Still all to play for. I suppose it's one of the things we see regularly at uh, C standard, B standard, and e even in some of the A standard games that not quite being used to the end of game situations here and uh, knowing when to foul, when not to foul. And even now, it'll be interesting to see if they recognize the fact they might need a three point shot if she makes one of these. The first one rattles out for. Ella Corlin. So the first priority for St. Joseph's is that they get the rebound if this is missed and push it down the floor. I don't think there's any timeouts left. So she hits the second. So a three-pointer is needed. But it's a turnover. And that looks like it will be enough. And it is indeed. As Anya Lockman puts the exclamation point on a fantastic performance. And St. Louis Carrick Lacrosse are the under 19 C All Ireland Schools League champions. Commiserations to St. Joseph's Secondary School from Castlebar on a fantastic performance, a great game. Unfortunately, in, there is always going to be a runners up, and today it's them. A fantastic performance overall by both teams. Very entertaining game. But. Congratulations to St. Louis Carrick Macross. We will leave you today with the presentation, which will include the MVP presentation and the winners and runners up medal presentation. So thank you very much for joining us today and we will leave you with the presentation.